Hello everybody. My name is Ho Kyung Shon at the University of Technology Sydney. This is my great pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, my lecture is about uh, how to design a seawater desalination plan and I'm very happy to give uh, this lecture through Resilient Eco Smart City. And then after this uh, class, I hope you can try to design your seawater desalination plan independently. My lecture consists of uh, different sections. First of all, uh, I will talk about what to, we have to study to design a seawater desalination plan. There are many different pretreatment processes and the reverse osmosis post-treatment, why we need this kind of uh, different process. And then what's the key terminologies used uh, to describe this seawater desalination plan and the uh, water quality parameters, especially in seawater. So what's the TDS, what's the uh, hardness, alkalinity, and then scaling, inorganic scaling, depending on the See what the river source mostly process related uh, water quality parameters. In particular, I want to focus on the river source mosses because river source mosses is a golden standard of uh, seawater desalination plan. So, most of uh, desalination plan consists of uh, mainly river source mosses. So, we will uh, understand better how to design reverse osmosis, how it works, and how we can make a better design of the reverse osmosis. And then uh, we will look at the more details seawater desalination plant. So let's look at the desalination. So if you see the global seawater desalination capacity, so you can see the here. Yeah located in the US and Middle East. In particular, Saudi Arabia is the largest desalination plant. Also Australia, we have uh, uh, several major desalination plants. So capital cost of the desalination plant since 2013, it's keep increasing because most of people want to live in near the sea and then they have uh, urbanization in near the, around the seawater and we need more water like uh, Sydney, Melbourne, so Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide. So we are all located near ocean which uh, will be a very important water resource to responding to the growing the population. So we need to learn What's the seawater desalination? So this is the example desalination in Australia. So this is the timeline of the um, desalination milestone. So you can see the all the detail and 2008. So Sydney desalination plant was initiated because of Sydney dam capacity. So you can see the 2008. So dam level was uh, lower than 50% and then we need to look at the alternative water resource. That's the reason why we uh, constructed a Sydney desalination plant and this capacity is uh, 250 megaliter per day. It costed $2.1 billion dollars. We first operated in January 2010 and operations was shut down June 2012 because we had enough rainfall and dam level increased almost 99%. That's the reason why it was completely shut down because the desalination plant required a lot of energy and we reoperated. Uh, when we had 70% uh, of dam level and it was uh, January 
last year. So depending on the dam level, we have a, a reoperation and shutdown for a, our desalination. So let's look at the, how many desalination plants we have in Australia. So we have a six desalination plant called the Coast Desalination Plant, Sydney, Victoria, Adelaide, and Perth Southern Desalination Plant. So you can see that they all consist of uh, renewable energy certificates based on the wind farm. So this is the major desalination plant in Australia in the future. So as population grow, even Newcastle, Wollongong, and then another major city may require a big desalination plant to sustain their water resource mineralization. How about our desalination plant in Sydney? The capacity is 250 megaliter per day. This uh, process consists of uh, Durham screens, dual media gravity filtration system, micro cartridge filtration. Here micro cartridge filtration just try to protect the second pass seawater reverse osmosis just in case large particles pass through the this gravity filtration and then uh, try to reduce the membrane fouling to reverse osmosis system and post-treatment is uh, lime fluoride CO2 remineralization so compared to the other plant so post-treatment uh, there is the one more uh, special post-treatment fluoride so we can also think about uh, even though we have a six desalination plant they are little bit different. However, the most common process is the seawater reverse osmosis, RO process. It's uh, very uh, consistent. So we have to learn how to design uh, this kind of uh, desalination plant. This is not only um, seawater desalination plant. So reverse osmosis can be used for the wastewater reuse also uh, industrial water reuse, mining water reuse. So reverse osmosis is the very well established technology for recycling water because this can remove all the salt and contaminants for this uh, desalination uh, plant briefly. And let's look at the little bit more detail how this desalination plan has to be uh, designed so you can see this is the this desalination plan general schematic so this is the exactly same process schematic of uh, Sydney and Gold Coast desalination plants so two desalination plant were designed by the Veolia and then they made a very similar process. So let's look at the one by one and then we can better understand how to design better for this uh, process. So seawater. So already you have uh, experienced seawater. What's the taste of seawater? It's uh, very salty because the salt concentration is almost 3.5%, 35 gram per liter. So where is the, this salt from? So when this seawater concentration is uh, very high, from when? So when the earth was born, 100 millions ago, at that time, we had only volcano and then everything was uh, just burned and after volcano for a long time and then we had a lot of rainings so this raining just washed out all 
all the dissolved salt such as sodium, chloride, magnesium, calcium, and any kind of dissolved salt and organics. That's the reason why seawater was 35 gram per liter when the earth was born and then still the seawater concentration is uh, very much similar so this seawater salt concentration is problematic because when you design this high salt we have to remove these small molecules so that uh, we have to spend a lot of energy and we need to go through first uh, this uh, screening system for the prefiltration and chlorination so already you know the chlorine will kill bacteria so microorganism will die because the chlorination so in the process pumping piping so we want to make sure that all the biofilm will never ever grow so performance will be maintaining very uh, sustainably and chlorine will be added to remove all the microorganism and biofilm inhibition and ferric chloride so ferric chloride will be dosed because uh, large particle can be influent this uh, process which will clog the media filter reverse osmosis so we want to remove the large particle so flocculation using iron chloride so we can try to remove and settling down however mostly the seawater quality of uh, large particle is uh, very clean not really heavily uh, contaminated by the large particles so whenever we have uh, high turbidity concentration so we can add ferric chloride so this uh, ferric chloride is uh, from time to time when you have a very large concentration of uh, turbidity you can apply for this uh, iron chloride concentration and pH adjustment so what's the pH of uh, water so let's just see the our drinking water so our water the pH around 6.5 to 7.5 very neutral pH and what's the pH of uh, coca-cola so coca-cola pH is around pH 2 and lemonade so pH is very low that's the reason why the, when you have uh, uh, your teeth for a long time is Coca-Cola and lemonade. So this uh, low pH will dissolve the, our calcium compound in our teeth. So we have to consider what's the pH of the seawater. So this pH of seawater is around 8 or nine eight to nine so why the pH is uh, very high in seawater so in the seawater is the dissolved or inorganic carbon which is the total of uh, aqueous CO2 and bicarbonate and carbonate so this uh, CO2 concentration in the air they are keep exchange their concentration with uh, seawater so that uh, they have a different pH variation depending on the what kind of the you have a dominant species between among this uh, CO2 bicarbonate and carbonate so you can see the CO2 concentration if you have a more than pH 8 so you don't have any more CO2 concentration however when you have a pH 8 so this bicarbonate has the highest concentration so when you have a pH more than 9 
So this uh, carbonate concentration is the highest. So this is the reason why the seawater has a very high concentration of uh, bicarbonate and then this uh, created a good buffer solution and created a very high pH of the seawater. The carbonate ion concentration increase with increasing pH and when more CO2 dissolves in seawater, it becomes more acidic. So let's uh, think about climate change. So we increase the CO2 concentration, which means CO2 will dissolve more in the seawater. So seawater CO2 concentration increase, so it becomes more acidic condition, which will be changing the uh, seawater ecosystem, for example, like uh, shells, crabs, or uh, corals. So they need uh, calcium to create the, their skins or their lives. And when you have a high pH, and they can produce the CO bicarbonate, carbonate, and then produce the calcium carbonate with their skins and corals. However, when you have a very high concentration of CO2 due to the climate change, and this seawater becomes more acidic, which means the coral cannot grow and shells, crops cannot survive in the seawater. That's the reason why the pH of seawater depending on also CO2 bicarbonate carbonate concentration. So after this pH, so this pH is uh, relatively high which will create the inorganic scaling and fouling. That's the reason why we need to make sure lower pH. So pH A, we have to put the hydrogen sulfate to reduce the pH up to A, which will um, make a better performance of this dual media filter and reverse osmosis process. So pH has to be reduced uh, 6 based on the original pH of A. And next step is uh, dual media filtration and pretreatment. So we need to remove the, some of the particle in the seawater. <coughs> so this uh, dual media filtration is like a sand filter or some anthracite filtration system. So you can have a seawater pass through the, this uh, media filter, which you, will remove most of large particles and go for the reverse osmosis process. So when you have uh, your assignment 3, so you can select your preferred pretreatment process. So there are two different pretreatment process. One is conventional which is a dual media filter or sand filter. So Sydney desalination plant and Gold Coast, Victoria desalination plant, Pulse desalination plant. So four of the desalination plant consist of uh, this media filtration we call conventional pretreatment. And Southern desalination plant Adelaide desalination plan include ultra filtration pretreatment. So two plans consist of ultra filtration, advanced pretreatment, and four plans are conventional pretreatment. So when you're considering the all the capital cost, when an operation and maintenance cost, energy cost, capital cost. So total cost is very much uh, similar, but people believe ultrafiltration advanced uh, 
pretreatment is a better quality of uh, your pretreated water and then very consistent performance of uh, reverse osmosis. That's why people like to have uh, more ultra filtration pretreatment. But conventional is a little bit cost effective, also easy to maintain, easy to handle and operate. That's the advantages of uh, this pretreatment system. That's why when you do your assignment three, so you can select conventional treatment, send the filtration, media filtration, which already covered in assignment to block two. There is uh, some section of the filtration system design and ultra filtration also you have experience the membrane bioreactor. So you can have a very brief design of uh, this pre after pretreatment dual media filter and just before the reverse osmosis. So you need to go through anti scalon dose. So what's the anti scalon So we have a seawater and we need to extract water using reverse osmosis, which means your concentration of calcium, magnesium, silica, which are the very dominant inorganic scaling compounds. So you can see the calcium carbonate because of the pure water is extracted, your concentration of calcium and CO3 increased and you will have uh, this kind of a crystal on the surface of the RO membrane. Also calcium sulfate and magnesium carbonate, even calcium phosphate, there are many different of uh, your inorganic scale and because of uh, low solubility and they try to create the crystals. So this crystal will be a problem to crop the reverse osmosis membrane. So we need to include anti scaland which are surface active materials that interfere with uh, uh, precipitation reactions in three primary ways. Threshold inhibition, crystal modification, and dispersion. So anti scaland try to interfere your precipitation precipitation reaction from these uh, three ways and in seawater desalination we have uh, uh, a commonly used uh, anti scaland which is uh, sodium hexametaphosphate so this is the sodium um, phosphate so this uh, composition can capture your calcium, magnesium, and some of the your um, inorganic scale and um, primary compound and try to reduce the, your inorganic scale, scaling. So this is the um, structure of the this uh, sodium hexametaphosphate. So after you add this one also we need to go through dechlorination so what's the dechlorination so we had the chlorination here to remove microorganisms and bacteria to inhibit biofilm in the pump pipeline and filtration system and we have a dechlorination so what's the so dechlorination process just to remove uh, chlorine so why we have to remove chlorine because the reverse osmosis membrane is uh, polymer which is the polyamide so this uh, polymer will be degradable when you have uh, oxidant so chlorine is a very strong oxidant 
which will degrade your aro polymer surface so this process can be resolved by addition of uh, sodium bisulfide SPS and granular activate carbon filter so normally in seawater desalination we don't have to go through another uh, granular activate carbon filter because this chemisorption process where chlorine reacts with uh, the carbon surface which will make uh, active chlorine to chloride ions so this chloride ion is no longer uh, oxidant so this is the very safe for reverse osmosis however this cannot be used for this uh, dechlorination in seawater desalination we just put the um, SPS so dosing rate is around 3 to 1 ratio of uh, SPS Cl2 active chlorine dose so reaction time is about 2 minutes so this is the SPS and chlorine together with water and sodium um, sulfate and then produce the hypochloride so this compound Cl2 is a strong oxidant but becomes just the normal um, salt chloride ion also this is the similar uh, reaction so we have uh, chlorine active material to iron salt so that's the reason why we need the dechlorination process and reverse osmosis which is the most uh, important because seawater desalination wastewater reuse and industrial and mining a lot of uh, process consists of uh, reverse osmosis because they remove basically everything and after this uh, reverse osmosis membrane so we will cover this small uh, reverse osmosis RO uh, next uh, slide because this is the one of the main target of this block 3 so we will make a very detailed explanation of uh, reverse osmosis membrane module process design so assignment 3 is very much related to how to design reverse osmosis after reverse osmosis most of salt removed and the pure water is collected and desalinated water go to um, post treatment with lime so we just call remineralization so why do we have to go through remineralization because we remove the all the minerals from seawater after reverse osmosis so raw mineral water have has a few adverse effects first one is the very high corrosion potential so if you have uh, no mineral such as calcium magnesium so when you carry the, your water desalinate water in the pipeline this uh, has no mineral and no buffer and very corrosive potential and second reason is the dietary deficiency deficiency causing risks of uh, heart and some um, vascular disease so we need uh, this mineral for our uh, healthy drinking water and WHO recommends 10 milligram per liter of magnesium and 30 milligram per liter of calcium for drinking water so we need a remineralization that's the one of reason we need to mix with the surface water 
not only desalinated water because sulfate water, dam water includes um, calcium, magnesium. And two solutions are widely used to mineralize the neutralized water and lime. So this is lime is uh, calcium hydroxide or we put the calcite limestones. Calcite limestone is like uh, stone and then filtration and just dissolve the calcium and we can have uh, some good um, remineralized water and CO2 addition. CO2 can also create the good buffer solution. As I mentioned before, the CO2 depending on pH it becomes um, bicarbonate carbonate which will create the more alkalinity and buffer capacity of water and this gives a good uh, performance of the our less corrosive potential and sodium carbonate also the second option is the addition of calcium chloride or sodium carbonate can be remineralized compounds also we discussed about fluoride so fluoride is used mainly in sydney desalination plant so what's the group for fluoride so fluoride can reduce the, your cavity in your teeth so this uh, fluoride is additional uh, compound which can protect our teeth and then we have another chlorination to remove the, some microorganism while we, our desalinate water carries to the pipeline and mixed with uh, our dam water and then surface water so water supply distribution system can be combined and let's look at the operation cost so what's the reason already we discussed about wastewater reuse and desalination so which one do you prefer what's the pros and cons so seawater desalination one of uh, Cons is uh, energy. So, 51% of energy cost, and then you have indirect cost, monitoring, maintenance, labor, and waste stream disposal, chemicals, and the membrane replacement. So, energy cost is very high compared to wastewater use because of uh, high salt concentration which means high osmotic pressure to overcome this uh, high osmotic pressure we need a high pressure pump which is uh, equivalent to energy consumption so we have a seawater 35 gram per liter which is uh, almost uh, 30 bar osmotic pressure so you need around 60 bar high pressure for your reverse osmosis membrane which will recover around 50% of your desalinated water. So that's the reason why energy cost is very very high. So when you produce the one cubic meter of uh, seawater, desalinated water, so energy requirement is the almost 3.5 to 4 kilowatt hour so how much it cost for 1 kilowatt hour in Sydney so it costs around 0.3 dollars for 1 kilowatt hour energy cost which means 4 kilowatt hour for 1 cubic meter so you need uh, around 1.5 two dollar for one cubic meter of desalinated water for only energy cost so 
this energy cost is very high and then we need to save how to reduce the, this energy for desalination plan so that's the overall our future area which can contribute very significant desalination plan so this is the all about desalination plan your assignment so you can describe and design how to uh, make a process for your Sydney or desalination plan and then how to make sure your calculation to design mainly for reverse osmosis because you can explain briefly for this kind of uh, process however this uh, arrow has to be main topic for this block 3 so we can focus more detail how to design reverse osmosis process so what are the key terms to describe the membrane processes so flux so this is the what the flux is about throughout per membrane permeate area so we just utilize water flux so membrane pass through this water molecule and then we just utilize as a liters per hour per square meter so we just say lmh so when you have a liter how many water pass through the membrane and the one square meter and then hours so we call the lmh to design your membrane process so in the u.s they utilize gallon per square feet per day also we have to make sure balance of the driving force and resistance to flow so permeate is about the water treated by membrane so we have feed water concentrate and permeate so this permeate often called the filtrate in microporous applications and permeate common term is in RO NF and sometimes ultrafiltration and concentrate is about the concentrate waste from membrane sometimes called reject or brine on reverse osmosis and nanofiltration so in your assignment so you can see the what's the high concentration of brine or reject concentrate impact when you discharge the after desalinated water so this concentration will go back to ocean so how this will impact the the overall ecosystem of uh, seawater so recovery is uh, permeate over feed so this is uh, important when you design your seawater desalination so let's say 50% uh, of recovery this means you have a uh, one liter per hour feed water and then you will collect 0.5 liter per hour permeate and then 0.5 liter per hour concentrate will go back to uh, ocean so that uh, this recovery depending on your design is uh, very important and transmembrane pressure so this is the important because uh, driving pressure across the membrane so how much uh, pressure you have to apply so when you have a very severe fouling so this transmembrane pressure will change significantly so we have to stop the, your process and then you have to also calculate the TMP to produce the, your permeate and transmission is passage of a certain solute across a membrane the opposite of the rejection transmission is uh, equal to 1 minus rejection 
so when you have a rejection transmission so 99% of the salt rejection in seawater and still 1% pass through the your membrane so we have to calculate the permeate our concentration to make sure that the drinking water quality so rejection transmissions are very important to design our seawater desalination plant unit is grouping of a membrane and process with common feed pump piping and controls element is uh, individual membrane unit and module is individual membrane unit but this terminology is utilized for porous membrane microfiltration ultrafiltration element is uh, basically from reverse osmosis nanofiltration also cassette already you have experience to design membrane bioreactor so individual membrane unit for your submerged membrane cassette ultrafiltration microfiltration CIP so in a certain stage you need to go through your cleaning because membrane will fold and this we call uh, clean in place so chemical cleaning or physical cleaning can be utilized for CIP backwash is uh, intermittent reverse flow to remove solid and enhanced backwash is reverse flow with uh, brief chemical dosing used to increase the CIP interval so chemical enhanced backwash is enhanced flux maintenance so next one is uh, water quality parameters Essential water quality parameters are very important to design a seawater desalination plant because we can make a better selection of pretreatment and reverse osmosis membrane. Also, we can predict organic fouling, inorganic fouling, and biofouling. So let's look at the, what's the source seawater quality parameters. So turbidity levels above 0.1 mg per liter are indicative of high potential for fouling and spikes above 50 NTU for more than one hour would require sedimentation, pretreatment or uh, dissolved air flotation treatment prior to filtration. So high NTU will damage the pretreatment so that the uh, we have to utilize the tough DAF or flocculation sedimentation process before uh, filtration process and total organic compounds. So if you think about the summer time and winter time, so microbial activity is uh, more active during summer time and we have a more organic compound. So if Below 0.5 mg per liter, biofouling is unlikely. So above 2 mg per liter, biofouling is very likely. So during the summertime, more organic concentration. So biofouling effect will be much higher than winter time. So depending on the area. So we have to consider this uh, total organic carbon concentration in general. In Sydney, we have almost less than one milligram per liter of uh, total organic carbon concentration, which is relatively safe for biofouling impact. So, salt density index (SDI15). So, this source seawater level is consistently below two year around typically indicate that no additional filtration pretreatment is needed and SDI more than 4 so pretreatment is necessary so what's the exact meaning of uh, SDI this is the concept of SDI 
So SDI is calculated number based on filtration of a sample through a 0.45 micro filter pad. So SDI readings are used to indicate the fouling tendency of the water for use as ROP water. So let's look at uh, this uh, setup. And we have a uh, nitrogen gas which required for the pressurizing the your water and this is the seawater to measure SDI and this is the membrane which is the 0.45 micrometer filter fat and this one you can pass through the your seawater and then measure your water flux so you can measure SDI following formula SDI 15 is uh, equal to 100 1 minus T1 over T2 and 15 so T1 is the time in second to filter initial 500 millimeter of sample so seawater initially 500 millimeter collected and then how many seconds we measure and T2 is time in second to filter final 500 millimeter of sample so after 50 minutes it's allowed to pass through between timed sample interval so first 500 millimeter and after 50 minutes and we measure again t2 in seconds to filter final 500 millimeter of sample and utilize this uh, equation so when you have uh, more than four of the SDI so you have a very bad water quality so you need a, a pretreatment to reduce the SDI and protect the reverse osmosis so this SDI is uh, important when you have a RO membrane warranty so if you have a high SDI very bad water quality which will lead to causing your RO membrane and pretreatment. So when you have a contract with a, a membrane company, so they try to make it a warranty when you have a less SDI, SDI more than five, so they don't have any warranty period. However, your water quality is less than uh, five or four SDI so they can have a good warranty timing when you have uh, your feed water quality and total suspend solid is uh, needed to access the amount of residues generated during pretreatment so does not correlate well with the turbidity and beyond five NTU and iron concentration is uh, uh, one of the essential parameter because if uh, iron is in reduced form the so seawater RO membrane can tolerate up to 2 mg per liter if iron is in oxidized form like uh, iron oxide Fe2O3 and concentration more than 0.05 milligram per liter would cause accelerating fouling so you have a very oxidized iron oxide can easily combine together with the other compound and this will create the membrane fouling manganese is very much similar if manganese is reduced form SWR membrane can tolerate up to 0.1 milligram per liter if manganese is oxidized form concentration more than 0.02 mg per liter would cause accelerate the fouling so when you remove this kind of manganese iron so we need extra treatment such as flocculation process same as the silica concentration higher than 20 mg per liter may cause accelerated fouling so we need to analyze for colloidal silica concentration if concentration is more than 
20 milligram per liter. So we have to consider what kind of pretreatment process is required for silica removal. And chlorine, concentration higher than 0.01 milligram per liter would cause aromembrane membrane damage. As I mentioned last class, chlorine is the oxidization, so can damage the RO membrane polymer. Temperature less than 12 degree would cause a significant increase in water energy use. Temperature more than 35 degree may cause accelerated mineral scaling and biofouling. Temperature more than 45 may cause irreversible RO membrane damage. Also, oil at grease, pH, already we discussed about the pH last meeting. Additional parameter also we need to consider carbon dioxide, bicarbonate, and carbonate. So, this is the buffering capacity which will uh, combine with the calcium carbonate phosphate and the magnesium carbonate which will generate inorganic scaling, acidity and alkalinity hardness such as uh, magnesium and calcium, phosphorus, total dissolved solid which is uh, related to osmotic pressure. So seawater has uh, 35 gram per liter, 3.5 percent osmotic pressure is almost 30 bar. So we have to consider how much hydraulic pressure has to be applied and then recovery can be obtained. And barium sulfate, strontium sulfate and disinfectants are very important for designing your seawater desalination plan. So basically essential water parameters is uh, water chemistry so watch the solubility of uh, different uh, compounds in seawater and watch the saturation point in terms of their uh, inorganic scaling potential and the organic biofouling potential so i'm sure that uh, most of students do not have a chemistry background in water so very difficult to calculate that's the reason why we need the computer aided software to predict our water quality parameters so as you can be seen this is the one example from our software and this is the water quality parameter so first uh, you collect your water and then just to put the, all the different noun concentrations such as ammonia, potassium, sodium, barium or some CO2, bicarbonate, carbonate and then sulfate also different temperature, pH and turbidity, total suspended solid, SDI and what's the concentration of organic compound so you can see the all the feed water sample what's the type of seawater surface water well water waste water so what kind of pretreatment we are utilizing so this will provide all the your water chemistry when you recover your seawater more than 50 percent and what kind of inorganic scaling and organic scaling, biofouling scaling can be predicted from the, this software. That's why it is it. You don't need a very strong water chemistry background because this software will tell you briefly what kind of potential for your membrane fouling. 
SWR, let's look at the history. So when we started from this uh, SWR, um, first seawater desalination in Kuwait, 1956, and desalination commercial plan construction, 1970. And we have uh, had the leading desalination market at the time by distillation so problem was uh, energy consumption was very high 10 kilowatt hour per cubic meter so just boiling and then your energy consumption is uh, almost uh, more than double of uh, reverse osmosis and first energy reduction desalination to reverse osmosis happened only 1992 2000 so reverse osmosis membrane innovation and then growth so this is the first technology innovation period and since 2005 so a lot of uh, commercial opportunity and produced the leading desalination market by reverse osmosis and energy cost almost uh, 4 kilowatt hour per cubic meter so this is the second technology innovation so look at the distillation 10 and nowadays the, we can operate uh, energy reduction by up to 4 kilowatt hour per cubic meter so we can study for reverse osmosis how to design better rather than this so what's the RO membrane so this is the general size and different contaminants how can we remove so let's look at the one micrometer so human hairs around 10 to 100 micrometer beach sand one millimeter to 100 micrometer activate carbon so let's look at the less than one micrometers so this is the range of uh, nano filtration and reverse osmosis so nowadays the coronavirus is uh, one of the big issue so virus size is the 0 0.005 micrometer to 0.1 micrometer so coronavirus is around 100 mi nanometer size 0.1 micrometer so when you remove this virus so we need to utilize the ultra filtration or uh, nano filtration so this is the nano filtration range nano filtration can remove sugar and then some of the endotoxin compound dies and when you try to remove the sodium chloride which is the most uh, abundant concentration in seawater and salt and the metal ions and atomic radius so sodium size is almost uh, 0.6 nanometer and chloride is a little bit bigger size then if we separate from pure water H2O less than 0.6 nanometer size and then we have to utilize the reverse osmosis membrane so we have to design this kind of uh, membrane to separate your sodium chloride from seawater and only pure water can be extracted from your so RO membrane nanofiltration very much similar mechanism so non-porous membrane so membrane thickness increased permeate flux decreased so active layer as soon as possible to produce the more higher flux and membrane structure is asymmetric so some nanofiltration was membrane have a same asymmetric so symmetric is the uh, different 
I can microfiltration, ultrafiltration. However, uh, auto membrane nanofiltration consists of uh, asymmetric membrane. So we just call thin pink composite membrane for nanofiltration and all reverse osmosis. So let's look at the RO membrane element and membrane structure. So you can see this is the RO element. So you have a lot of layers. Uh, we just call spiral round wound the membrane element. And this is the microscopy membrane. So you can see that uh, there are three layers for RO membrane. First layer is ultra thin skin layer. Second layer is polysulfone support layer. And last layer is the backing layer. So you can see that this uh, skin layer we just call polyamide thin pink composite. So we just call the TFC, thin pink composite RO membrane. So this skin layer. Mm, polyamide can separate your salt and pure water so the pore size is almost uh, 0.6 nanometer and water molecule will pass through and then you can separate your salt and pure water so this skin layer is uh, very important however this skin layer is uh, 20 nanometer of uh, uh, thickness so very weak so that uh, we need to have a support layer for the polysulfone polymer so just uh, polysulfone and then we pressurize the 60 bar so this pressure has to be tolerated from this membrane that's the reason why we have a third layer of uh, the backing layer so if you look at the more detail, so this is the 20 nanometer of uh, skin layer, active layer. And this is the polysulfone um, support layer. And this is the non-open backing layer. So three um, layers consist of uh, RO membrane. Understand? And this is the transport phenomenon of uh, reverse osmosis membrane and mass transport across membrane is the diffusion and osmosis is very important so we need to understand better of uh, osmosis and concentration polarization permeable flux which is limited by osmotic pressure and concentration polarization apart from the intrinsic the membrane resistance and so what's the osmotic pressure so you have a feed water very low concentration of salt and brine very high concentration of salt in between we have RO membrane so when you have uh, this condition so what happened is that then uh, Water, pure water, low salt concentration will pass through the, your membrane and then you have a water head. So your high concentration, high osmotic pressure will suck your water molecule through your RO membrane and then you can create the, your natural osmotic pressure. So we just call forward osmosis and opposite meaning is uh, reverse osmosis. So we pressurize here and then push it through your water molecule to the lower concentration and we just call reverse osmosis. So when you look at the nature, so what kind of osmotic pressure can be applied? So this is cherry. So cherry has a very high sugar inside your uh, fruits. And then sugar has a high concentration. 
and high osmotic pressure. So when you have uh, water, rain water, and water will stay on the surface of cherry, and this water molecule, the skin layer of the cherry, is uh, almost a membrane. So water molecule will pass through because of the sugar osmotic pressure and then you can burst out this uh, cherry if you have a very mm, high concentration of uh, your sugar because uh, water molecule will pass through and then make them bigger and bigger finally this cherry will be burst out so let's look at the compounds sodium chloride magnesium sulfate and scroll seawater so when you have a sodium chloride 1000 milligram per liter and osmotic pressure is 1 kilopascal which is 1 bar and so magnesium sulfate 1000 which is 25 kilopascal 0.25 bar and scrolls is sugar which is uh, similar to cherry sugar concentration has very low osmotic pressure because this is the organic salt so it's not fully ionized in water so that the osmotic pressure is uh, relatively low and the seawater 35 gram per liter has uh, around 2 27 bar osmotic pressure so how to calculate the osmotic pressure so Bandhoff equation can be applied so in 1901 so this Bandhoff received the first Nobel Prize in chemistry for this work with solution osmotic pressure is equal to concentration and idea gas constant and temperature of the your mm, solution so when you have a high concentration you have a very high osmotic pressure and idea constant is uh, uh, fixed and temperature is the solution so when you have a high temperature you have a high osmotic pressure because you can dissolve your salt and sol solubility is higher and we have to be consider what's the dissociated solid and this is the osmotic pressure way of uh, your recovery weight so we have a uh, feed water 36 gram per liter of uh, salt concentration and this is the RO membrane and chlorate 50% of the recovery the fluorate of feed water and fluorate brine is goes to this way and then what the molecule pass through and we have uh, almost uh, less than 250 milligram per liter of uh, permeate concentration so this is the osmotic pressure 30 bar here and then your osmotic pressure is almost 60 bar in brine because this is the 50% of the recovery so energy consumption 3 times the theoretical limit 3.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter so reverse osmosis recovery can be calculated based on permeate flow over feed flow and concentration polarization so this is the very unique terminology for reverse osmosis membrane so what's the meaning of this CP solute concentration at the membrane surface is higher than bulk concentration a distance away from the membrane surface so diffusion from the membrane surface back to the bulk solution so back diffusion can be enhanced by a 
cross flow high sharing so let's say this is seawater and salt concentration you can see the sum of the your dot and this is the membrane so pure water will pass through this membrane and you have uh, uh, accumulated salt and then higher concentration of your salt so with your membrane lens so your concentration polarization layer of uh, your salt concentration is higher so this is the bulk concentration 35 gram per liter and then you have a membrane surface concentration so depending on the your concentration polarization layer so your real osmotic pressure real concentration of uh, your um, osmotic pressure is uh, different from bulk osmotic pressure so we need to also consider this concentration polarization to better design the, your osmotic pressure between your membrane feed side and permeate side so real osmotic pressure difference will occur between this membrane and then concentration polarization will be a real osmotic pressure your design of uh, seawater desalination so all our process are in cross flow mode to limit this uh, uh, CP effect so you have a very high cross flow and then you will wash out and make a turbulent and reduce the, your high concentration of uh, your salt on the membrane surface so let's look at the more detail how we mm, design this uh, arrow element so first one is the pressure button so pressure button consists of fiberglass or stainless steel to tolerate high pressure more than 60 bar 70 bar so we need a very strong materials and up to a spiral round element you know one pressure bus can be located and buses can be arranged into banks with desired number of stage or passes so if you look at the, this diagram so outside this is the pressure buses so inside pressure buses each element will be located here so your water feed water is passed through and in between so you see what uh, flowing the this uh, channel flow and then you have a uh, permeate water flux can be collected from this uh, product water outline and then this is the uh, keep concentrate and then brine is coming out from this uh, pressure bustle and this pressure bus required very high pressure so you can design the very high strong material and this can be a good kind of design and that we can put around one to eight elements in one pressure bus so depending on the your design capacity so we can select seven elements or six elements so let's look at the energy distribution in seawater desalination plant so this is the overall total energy uses 3.9 kilowatt hour per cubic meter required to desalinated water with the TDS concentration 35 gram per liter and temperature 23 degree so intake from seawater we collect seawater so we need pump so this will consume around 0.2 kilowatt hour per cubic meter 
and this goes to the pretreatment, filtration or sand filtration or ultra filtration. So we need pumping and pressure. So point four kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So almost ten percent of the energy consumption in the desalination plant. After pretreatment, need a high pressure pump to operate the reverse osmosis system. So this arrow requires 2.8 kilowatt hour per kilometer of energy consumption, which is equivalent to 72 percent of uh, energy consumption. And after pumping, so we have to deliver this water. So pumping energy consumption is uh, 0.3 kilowatt hour per cubic meter, almost 8 percent of uh, overall energy consumption. Also, we have uh, other facilities such as the sludge disposal and then discharge to the our brine and we need around 0.2 kilowatt hour per cubic meter, 5 percent. So altogether 3.9 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. As I mentioned, this is a so how to calculate energy? So we can see this kind of uh, very um, simple example for the our uh, energy calculation. So seawater flow rate 100 kilometer per day. Apply pressure 75 bar. Uh, seawater desalination and recovery design 40 percent. Formula flow is uh, 40 kilometer per day. And power required without energy recovery device. I will talk about the energy recovery device next slide. And so this is the energy recovery without. So we need a 300 kilowatt hour kilowatt, and then we just uh, divide by overall flow rate cubic meter per hour permeable flow. And this will lead to 7.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So without energy recovery divide, so this value can be calculated from the your energy metering system. And power required with energy recovery turbine and energy recovery pressure exchange which will save the, your energy cost. So we just say 30 to 40 percent of energy saving, 50 to 60 percent of energy saving. So we can calculate around 3.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter with the pressure exchange, 4.4 with the energy recovery turbine. So this is the basically uh, we calculate from the energy metering system using pilot scale of RO membrane. But theoretically, so we can look at the, some calculation. Let's say 70 bar pressure applied, feed pressure and 3 cubic meter per second of flow rate. Typical water for feed pressure for high salinity. 0.8 pump efficiency and the consumed feed water energy because most of the energy consumption in seawater desalination is from pumping cost. So let's say feed pump is equal to your flow rate and this is the pressure applied and pump efficiency. So 3 cubic meter per second, 7 bar pressure the energy pumping efficiency 0.8 so we calculate this uh, value and then convert the, your unit and we calculate theoretically this pumping cost for RO membrane 7.29 kilowatt hour per cubic meter 
However, we have uh, energy recovery device, therefore we save the more energy from. So let's look at the overall energy. So this is the uh, Seward uh, RO system construction cost, thirty one percent. Power cost, twenty six percent. Intake discharge construction eleven percent. Pretreatment concentration twelve percent. Uh, system RO membrane replacement. 6% others chemical or sludge disposal 9% so let's say this uh, 100 kilowatt uh, watt times 10 hour we just say 1000 watt hour so this is 10 light bulbs and 100 watt utilize uh, 1000 watts for one hour is uh, equivalent to 1000 watt hour so one kilowatt hour energy cost is almost uh, 0.29 dollar in Australia. So let's say four kilowatt hour per cubic meter desalinated water. Energy cost of Sydney desalination plant we produced uh, 250 thousand cubic meter per day. So every day we spend two. Hundred ninety thousand dollar per day for the energy consumption, which is very huge. That's the reason why all the desalination plant in Australia utilize the wind farm, which is the renewable energy to reduce the CO2 and then the environmental impact. So already as uh, this video shows the pressure exchanger is the one of the breakthrough to reduce the seawater desalination plan. So what happened is that this is the seawater, this is the ceramic rotation material, and seawater is flowing this way. And the other side, we have a high pressure concentrate, almost a 60 bar. And then because of this pressure and this will rotate the this ceramic uh, material and then it's coming this seawater and this pressure will push this uh, uh, seawater and then this goes to the your RO influence and this will uh, change the your high pressure to transport to the seawater feed water and then you can save the, your energy so this is the way we can reduce the, our energy cost and the one of the small problem is that uh, whenever they push it through and then they are touch a little bit of uh, seawater at the surface here so concentration is uh, slightly high but compared to the energy saving cost so this is the very marginal. So that's the one way of the pressure exchange currently applied in three desalination plants in Australia. Also we have a different. Thank you for your attention. I hope you better understand how to design the seawater desalination plant. Watch the reverse osmosis, how this works so that uh, you can independently design a seawater reverse osmosis process. So if you have any questions, please uh, send the email uh, as uh, below this slide. And then I wish you all the best. Thank you.